The DAX formulas for calculating new versus returning customers in Power BI can get a little bit tricky. So in this video, let's understand the pattern clearly and implement new versus returning customer analysis on our awesome chocolates example. So here I have got a date wise, well, week wise report of how many customers we had and what is the returning customer and what is the new customer count. Obviously, for the very first week, we haven't had any customers prior. So the returning customer count would be zero and new customer is 71. For the week two, we have 92 total customers out of which 33 are returning and 59 are new customers. And that continues and you can see that over the period of time, for example, in the week ending 24th of February 2025, we had 65 returning customers and zero new customers. We haven't had anyone come, come into our business this week. So how do we calculate this? Let's start with the data. Here I have got a really simple data model, a single table that has the customer ID, the date on which they have transacted, what is the order quantity and product name. The order quantity and product names are helpful if you want to do some other analysis. But for now, we primarily will focus on these two columns. So for example, if I were to sort this on ascending order, you will see that here on 30th of December 2024, we had this customer 0131. That is the very first time they're transacting with us. And then further down, maybe next week, they might do a repeat business with us. If so, we want to treat them as a returning customer. Whereas if, if somebody is appearing for the very first time in our business at that point in time, they are the new customers. So that's the logic. The very first measure that you want to build is a basic distinct count measure. Customer count is a distinct count of the customer ID. So let's take a look at these measures closely in a table here. I'm going to put the date and it by default will show the hierarchy. I don't want the hierarchy here. So I'll just turn that off and let's add the customer count. So here we can see for each week, how many distinct customers we have 71 in that week, 92 in the second week like that. This is not the total number of transactions. If I do a row count on the table, that might be more than that. Now, the question is for any given point of time, let's say this is the point of time that we are interested. That's the context. I want to know how many of these 92 have already appeared in our business. So that's the logic that we want to build. Here I have already written the logic. You can see that this is how that works out. Let's build that out from scratch. So we are going to make a new measure and let's call this as returning customers V1 is equal to and we are going to start off by creating some variables to hold the temporary data and then that is the data that we can then use to do all the calculations. So the first variable that we want to declare is var custs. This is a list of all the customers that we are seeing as of that point in time. So for example, if I'm looking at this 92, that will be the list of those 92 people. This can be very easily obtained by using the values function, either values or you can also use the distinct function both of which will return the distinct values of the table at that point in time. Let's use values. So values of data customer ID at the time of evaluation for each week, it will be those 92 or 84 or 96 numbers. Let's go to the next line. By the way, you can use shift enter or alt enter to add new lines to the DAX and let's calculate current date. This is the date for which we are running this calculation and this would be in this kind of a very simple scenario, last date of my data date column. Now, if you have got a calendar table, then you would need to use the calendar table to generate the date. This would usually be not the last date, but the start of the month or end of the month or something like that based on your calendar table. In our data, things are really simple. So I'm just using the data date column directly to get the last date. So this would be basically this part is same as whatever the week that is. So for example, if I'm looking at that, that will be just 20th of January 2025. And this values would be just an enumeration of those 96 people. All the 96 IDs will be there. Now that both variables are created, let's return a calculation that tells me how many of these customers we have already seen in our business. So we will return and the return is a little bit complicated one, but we want to do a sum x. We want to sum 
for each of the customers that we have in our data so for each of these for example if i take this 96 for each of those 96 customers i want to do a check i want to check if they have appeared already or not so that kind of a check could be done with the calculate we want to calculate customer count where data date is prior to car date this is chandu from future, future. future when i'm editing the video instead of using the calculate distinct count of customers or the customer counts measure you can also use calculate count rows of the data itself this would be slightly faster than the distinct count because all we really wanted to check is whether someone has already transacted with us or not so if you have a count rows measure or a simpler measure like that use that instead of the distinct count because that would be slightly faster now what this calculate does is it calculates the customer count prior to the current date for each row of the customers table that we have created here the temporary table so for example let's just take one of these 96 customers it will go and count whether they have appeared before and it will just come back with customer count customer count for that customer would be just either one or zero now we don't want to do the calculation we want to then base our decision on that calculation if they have already appeared that means they have transacted with us before we just want to count that as one else zero so we could say if this calculate is greater than zero that means they have already transacted with us then one else zero and close bracket close bracket so essentially one way of thinking about this is this customers which for example one of these 96 people for each of them we run this internal check which then tells us if they have already done any business or not and so it will take one else zero so this for once it iterated for all the 96 it will end up with some of them previously doing the business they will have one others will have zero and all those ones will be added up because zeros will be ignored by the sum x or they won't be considered and you will end up with the count of all the repeat customers this is kind of like a long winded way of doing this check we'll talk about another way of doing this in a minute but for now this is the one and add this let's uh, take a look at this measure now and here we get 33 54 like that i've double checked these numbers with my excel formulas to make sure that the dax is working all right but that is how that works now like i said there is also another way of doing this but before we get there now that we know the returning customers let's calculate the new customers the new customers is really simple customer count minus returning customers would be the new customers if anybody is not returning that means they're new so we don't need to write the whole logic for the new customers we just use the subtraction option to generate the new customers so we can add that and we will end up with new customers as well so there is that table like i said there is another way of doing this this is where this formula comes in it is a slightly different approach but both of them produce the same result and in terms of the performance based on my testing of the 200 records and 1000 rows of data that i have they're both taking same amount of time so i assume they're similar but if you are if you know a little bit more about dax or how the calculations happen behind scenes let me know if you think one of them would be better so let me explain this formula it also declares a variable for current date using the last date so that part is same and extracts the list of customers into the customers variable so these two parts are same so now we construct another variable called past customers and here we are using calculate table to calculate a table of these customers and we're saying all take all the dates and then the date should be less than previous date the current date so essentially what this does is it will give you a table of these customer ids unique customer ids for anybody who have transacted prior to that point of time so all the prior customers essentially so this is like a roundabout way of saying calculate the this values but for the previous points of time not including this point in time so now that we have both of these variables so i'll call this one is the red variable and this is the blue variable 
we find out what is the repeat customers by using a DAX function called intersect. This is the very first time I had used this function, intersect function. So what this does is it gives you the intersection of both tables. So from original customers to the past customers, what is the intersection? And it gives a table, the repped customers. So then we return count rows of that. How many values are there in that intersection? That would be the repeat customers. So essentially that's the logic and let's add that uh, so the only difference that I'm seeing here is the intersect based approach will be blanking out for the very first data, whereas this one comes up as zero because zero, because we are using some X, so it's adding zeros and ones, so it will always come up as zero, whereas the intersect approach returns a null table, blank rows, there is nothing there. And then when the count rows sees that there is nothing, it comes back as blank. So that's the reason why these things are there. You can add some extra layers to it. For example, you can add a slicer on your product to see by product how many repeat customers are there. So for example, if I'm only interested in this product, uh, for example, on 6th of January, we had three more customers. None of them are returning. So six and three are separate. On 8th of 13th of January, we had eight more customers. And finally, on 20th of January, we had seven customers, one of which is returning. So they could be returning from any of the prior periods. Another enhancement that you can think about these, these calculations is rather than always doing less than, which goes back and compares all the prior data, you may want to set up a window. So anybody who has not done a repeat business in the last six weeks or four weeks or 12 weeks, those are the ones that we consider them as new customers. So this way you're not doing less than you're doing a window based comparisons for that uh, kind of things. It's better if you have a calendar table because then it's easy for you to do these kind of date manipulations quickly. Otherwise you could also use arithmetic logic like uh, instead of minus car date, you would say minus of car date plus end and then check another condition as well. So there you go. How did you find this? So this is uh, an interesting DAX challenge and I thought I uh, would make a video of it so that you can also learn this technique. Let me know your thoughts and how you solve this problem in Power BI using the comments below. I'll catch you again somewhere else. Bye.